Hi, I'm Lisa Prather, and welcome to The Voice of Health with our host, Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where lives are changed every day through the natural approach to health care. Well, today we're going to talk about how to live longer. I like that. What what prompted this topic, Dr. Prather? Well, this last Thursday, they just came out with the new statistics on 2018 on life expectancy. And for the first time in four years, we actually had an increase in life expectancy. The first time in four years. Yeah, because it had been going down for four years here in the United States. And so we had a trend where people were saying, wow, is this going to continue? Are we going to get lower and lower life expectancy rate? Uh, Now, one year doesn't maybe change a pattern, but it is uh, encouraging, shall we say. Right. So uh, That is good news. Yeah, Center of Disease Control was very pleased and said, you know, a lot of their efforts has really paid off on some of the things that they were addressing. So they're hoping this this trend continues and we can actually see an increase, you know, where we've had each generation since the founding of the United States live longer than the generation before. Mm-hmm. Look at uh, 1950 on the life expectancy at that time and it was 68 years. Now, you know, as we're looking at that, we're looking at uh, over 78 years as the life expectancy in the United States, almost 79 years. So that increased 10 years. Yeah, so we've had a 10-year increase since the 1950s, which everybody goes, yay. Uh You know, most people want to live longer. Yeah, especially uh, when you get close to that 68. Yeah, (laughs) right, right, right. Yeah, starting to approach that, you start thinking about it. And uh, you go, wow, ooh. You know, Uh that was the average life expectancy in 1950. So continuing that trend is something, and also looking at what are the reasons life expectancy is getting better or getting worse, and what are the different areas. And then we need to, one, think about that in a social setting. Mm -hmm. As individuals, we need to think about, well, what is it that's killing people? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I should avoid those things. (laughs) That's a real good thought. Uh Most people want to live a lot longer. Mm-hmm. And what is it the factors that kind of contribute to that? What are the factors to, that contribute to dying? And so uh, thinking about that is a real good idea. And they want to live a quality. Right. And quality life. Mm-hmm. I, I've had most people, I sit there and I said, you know, I, if you do this, you're going to add another 10 years to your life. And they said, well, I don't know if I want to. Uh-huh. And I said, well, you know, if you're healthy. Yes. Uh, you, you know, you're trying to make your health better. I have a high quality type of life. We were down in Florida recently and we were uh, visiting uh, your dad and his wife. And uh, there was a lot of people bouncing around in there that were in their 90s getting close to 100. Right. And so playing tennis, playing yeah, golf, quality of life like that. Those are the things that we're all looking for and having a lot a longer life expectancy. Nobody gets real excited when they find out that they could possibly die. Mm-hmm. You know, so. So why did life expectancy rise? You said this is the um, first time in four years. Four years, yes. Okay. Now there are uh, many different types of things that contribute to death rate. The top ten killers in the United States. Uh, number one is heart disease. Mm-hmm. Heart disease has been making regular progress. It is getting better. One of the biggest contributing factors along those lines is uh, people cutting down on smoking. The rate of smoking has a very strong correlation with cardiovascular disease and the basic life expectancy of the population. The Europeans are continuing to increase and they're increasing quicker than they are here in the United States, but they also have a lower smoking rate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's a very strong correlation well, on that. Well, that's interesting because when did the whole tobacco warning start? And one of the yeah. things that they feel that there was a real dip in there, and they expect life expectancy to uh, have a good contribution to mm-hmm. that. Now, one of the problems that they're concerned about is the uh, young people. The vaping. You know, the, the, the vaping, and, and there's been an increase in overall smoking Mm -hmm. Uh, people just sit there and say well you know vaping's not the same and it's bad as cigarettes and actually the evidence is showing up that it's actually worse right our our daughter's a nurse uh, in Chicago and she had a 19 year old patient 
in there for vaping. Almost, almost died. He almost died. Yeah, yeah. Th- that's one of the one of the things that they see that is a real concern is that eighteen and thirteen year olds. There's been a, a higher death rate. That's actually between the, uh, thirteen 18 to eighteen. Eighteen to th- eighteen to thir- thirty. Oh, yeah. 30. Okay. I'm like, you 30. said 13. Yeah, I'm okay. I might have. 18 to 30. Say 18 that to 30. again. There's a higher death rate that's occurring at that age. Wow. So that age is actually dying quicker. Because you have talked about possibly for the first time this next generation won't outlive. Right. And there's mm-hmm. several different disturbing trends. One, the increase in the vaping is, is a real big issue. There's also, well, some of the different types of things that are showing up is, number one is, is heart disease. Number mm-hmm. two is cancer. Accidents, basically unintentional injuries. That's number three. That's number three. Uh-huh. That's, that's the biggest thing that's actually been increasing. And that's very directly related to the drug use. Mm-hmm. So the increase in drug use is a, a real problem. Now, that actually slowed down and reversed a little bit. That's one of the, the biggest reasons why the death rate has actually dropped, is a, a stopping and, a, and some reversal, because the last four years, the times that they checked on the mortality rate, mm-hmm. is that that has jumped dramatically. That didn't used to be in number three. That used to be down in about six. Mm-hmm. So that has risen quite high, and the biggest reason is drugs. So, you, you know, if you can not smoke and not do drugs... There's actually things that, that we can do. Yes, that have those are very changed. direct. Those are mm-hmm. very direct types of things. That but determine. addictive behaviors. Addictive behaviors. Mm-hmm. You know, alcohol, there's more alcoholism. There's more drug addiction. There's more uh, increase in smoking. And also, uh, suicide is number 10. Mm -hmm. Suicide rate has gone up, and especially in the 18 to 30-year-olds. So uh, accidental deaths from drug overdose, uh, increase in vaping uh, and smoking, and then suicide is uh, really huge contributors to why our life expectancy has actually dropped. Interesting. So those are the very definite things that are are patterns that people are doing, Mm -hmm. self-destructive patterns. Mm -hmm. The things that uh, we do, you know, the patterns that we have, is really the choices that we make. Mm -hmm. Makes a very big difference. We can be very deliberate on whether we want to live or whether we want to die. And what is the reasons that people are doing these things? You know, so looking at uh, uh, your quality of life and what you're trying to escape from. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, those types of patterns may uh, play a very, very big role. So the number one cause of death is heart disease. Number two, cancer. Number three, uh, accidents, uh, car accidents, but also drug use is one of the big things. Uh, chronic lower respiratory disease, which is also related to smoking, because that's COPD. Mm. Uh, that's one of the biggest contributors along those lines. Stroke. Stroke is also kicked off quite a bit by uh, smoking uh, that increases your chances of having problems. Uh, Alzheimer's is number six. Now, that's, that's a problem that keeps on growing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, really looking at the causes of Alzheimer's and where that's going, because that used to be really low. That didn't even used to be in the top ten. And now it's six. Now it's number six, and it's increasing on a regular basis. Uh, diabetes, you know, those are lifestyle types of things. Type 1 diabetes is something that is an autoimmune disease, but type 2 diabetes is really where we're getting the increase from. Mm -hmm. And that basically has to do with lifestyle, you know, obesity, uh, lack of exercise. So again, our our lifestyle is is, uh, having a big uh, influence on that. Number 8 is influenza pneumonia, Mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, something that we're going to talk about and keep uh, up on people. But people don't realize how big of a killer that is. And what a, a big deal that is. So yeah, that's in the top ten. Top ten. Uh, nephritis and nef- uh, nephrotic syndromes, kidney disease. Mm-hmm. So kidney disease is a big factor and something that we look at in our office quite a bit. And then suicide is number ten. Wow. And you know when you look at this, uh, smoking, heart disease, cancer is involved with smoking, stroke, uh, lower respiratory diseases. So you're looking at the top five things are directly related to smoking. So smoking, vaping, 
all those types of things are probably one of the stupidest things that you could possibly do in your life mm-hmm. if you want to live a long life. If you want to be sick, die early, uh, <laughs> go on ahead and, and smoke and vape. Uh-huh. You know, let's, let's get real. Right. So, you know. Yeah, it's just interesting. Ran into someone, we were the same age. Right. But she looked 10 years older. Oh, yes. Because of the wrinkles from smoking and the lack of oxygenation. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're just trying to look good. <laughs> yeah. If, if you want to be, be sexy in your 40s and 50s, <laughs> don't smoke. You know, it's... What uh, about sexy in your 80s, 90s? 80s and 90s, yeah. <laughs> All right, when we come back, let's talk about why the U.S. lags far behind other countries in life expectancy. We'll be right back. You can win a free 60-minute massage in a relaxing spa at the Prather Practice. Each month, we have a drawing to give away a free massage to one of our lucky Facebook and Twitter fans. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. Dr. Prather, what is diathermy? The way that we like to uh, describe it to people is it's a, a, a large coiled magnet that produces a, a, a short wave beam that goes into the body. The main thing that uh, we like it is increasing circulation. The most common thing that we use it for is uh, drainage of the ears, otitis media, mm-hmm. uh, the, ear, the ear pain, the ear infections. For any mom who's been up with a little one screaming, the entire night, uh, knows how wonderful it would be to get that under control. (laughs) Yeah. I think about uh, one little guy who's just starting to walk, and he had a terrible ear infection. The antibiotics, you know, hadn't really kicked in or done anything at that point. They had heard that uh, we do take care of otitis media and uh, Mm -hmm. that that, you know, that we could make a pretty quick cure. And uh, the uh, husband was a little bit skeptical, but Mm -hmm. they both came in. Because mom had been up all night and didn't want to drive in. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and she looked like, oh, help me. Uh-huh. And the little guy was just, you know, thrashing and uh, in so much pain. So we brought him in and 15 minutes on the diathermy. He was laughing and, you know, looking around and waving at everybody. And, and they just kind of looked at me like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> How did this occur? Uh-huh. And we find that 15 minutes on the diathermy will just take away the pain, mm-hmm. just like that. So it's something that uh, is very easy to do, safe, uh, very effective, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, people just uh, are amazed by the changes that occur in their sinuses and those eustachian tubes. And in those ears, and and moms can bring in, get their child done, and and they're good. Yeah, that child's not continually going on antibiotic after antibiotic, destroying their gut and right, their weakening the immune, immune system. system. Uh, you can cause permanent. Too many antibiotic treatments can cause permanent damage to the uh, immune system. Uh, much better way of treatment is uh, the diathermy unit. Mm-hmm. Anyone with any type of ear problems. Uh, uh, you know, ear infection, otitis media, going up into the sinuses and vertigo, uh, also tinnitus. Extremely important for tinnitus. Uh-huh. So any of our patients with tinnitus, uh, the uh, recommendations are always to have diathermy because the diathermy does make an absolutely incredible difference with the tinnitus and uh, getting that under control. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. We're talking today about how to live longer. And the good news is life expectancy has risen. By a month. By a, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, only a month? Yeah, but, you know, it's a month, two months. Yeah. Uh, but oh, since 1950, that's resulted in 10 years. I see. Okay. So, you know, you're not going to see huge jumps. 
but it's a nice gradual type of thing usually. So right, I, in the 1950s you said the it was 68, like 68, and now was it's it, 78. Yeah, almost 79. Okay, here in the United States. So, well, how does the United States compare to the rest of the world on life expectancy? Terrible. Mm -hmm. So we are ranked as 38th country in the world on life expectancy. 38. 38th. All the wow. developed countries are ahead of us. All of them are. All the developed. So we're just before the... Undeveloped. Undeveloped. Actually, we're in the undeveloped countries. That makes me my stomach queasy. Right. Uh, wow. But we spend almost per person more on health than any other country in the world. We are doing something wrong. So we are doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. I just said that. Yes. <laughs> I emphasize that. <laughs> so there is a, it's not that we're spending, not putting in enough finances into it. Now, one of the things as we're talking about our medical care mm -hmm. is that the emergency type of care, mm -hmm. you know, where people are in trauma, where something needs to be done right now, mm -hmm. uh, we do actually do very well. So if we didn't have that, our life expectancy would be much lower. So if you're having a heart attack, if you're in crisis type of care, we have to go in there and get something done now to save your life. The best place to be in the world is the United States. So crisis care. Crisis care. Well with. If you do develop cancer. Now, we develop cancer at a much, much higher rate, but we also have a better cure rate for cancer. Mm -hmm. So the treatments are there. It's just that we get it at a much higher rate. So once we get to the portion where we have the disease, we do great. It's just that we're very quick at getting to the disease. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, you know, yeah. so it's the the prevention we're missing. Right. The type of right. health care that we practice, the structure function care is missing. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and we've talked about this that 80% of all care should be structure function. Mm -hmm. which is what you would consider more preventative. And we are the worst country in the entire world on structure function care. Mm -hmm. We are the best country in the entire world on disease care. And disease care is, we have a split on that, where 80% of all care should be really structure function and 20% should be disease care. Mm -hmm. And we are kicking it with the disease care. Well, it's like, you know, there's a fire and we're trying to... Well, you know, put out that fire. In other words, uh, we set a whole lot of fires in our houses, and then we call up the firemen and come in, and they're really good at putting it out because they got a lot of experience, and we're mm -hmm. putting a lot of money into it. But if we quit setting the fires in the darn houses, we'd be much better off. Right. So it's the same thing with our, our health care. You know, we talk about the health care crisis in America, and obviously we're 38th in the world. We're spending more money than anybody else. And it's an unsustainable amount of money that we're spending. Mm -hmm. And we're spending more and more and more. And we're getting worse and worse. We're falling behind. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because, you know, we sit there, well, we've got to make disease care better. No, we're, we're doing great on disease care. Mm -hmm. We need to make structure function care better. And the definition of structure function care is bringing things back into balance. Mm -hmm. When you bring things back into balance, that's called homeostasis. And homeostasis is the definition of health. So Americans are extremely unhealthy, but we do have the best disease care in the entire world, mm -hmm. uh, which has helped out with our life expectancy, but it's not going to solve our problems. So the United States needs to quit trying to well, if we just do our disease care better, uh, we're, we're going to see the results. No, we need Let's to prevent start, disease. Let's start working on structure function type of care, and then we're going to see dramatic, not that we throw away the disease care. Right. We need them both. We need them both. But 80% mm -hmm. of the effort should be on uh, structure function care. Mm -hmm. And so we're spending probably 90% of our money and resources on disease care and 10% on the structure function. If we could balance that out, mm -hmm. really we should be doing 80-20. Yeah, we'd be a healthy nation. We would be. We see it over and over. But how many times does a patient come in, show you their labs, or we do their labs, and 
you see so many things going on because you look at it in a holistic way. And they said, well, why did my other doctors say I'm okay? Because it hadn't been to a disease state yet, right? right? Because they are only thinking it's a disease state and we're we're already, okay, you're almost there. You're almost into the disease (laughs) state. Then we can do something. Let's get it a little bit farther (laughs) and then we can start working on it. So it's a foolish type of thing. And really the statistics show it up and all the things that I'm reading, nobody's really saying what the underlying problem is. Right. You know, it's just like, when we were talking about the whole opiate crisis, mm-hmm. when they put together a top panel of people on how to actually deal with this, uh, because there was a presidential commission on the opiate crisis. What, what's you know, people are dying. We have four hundred thousand people who died. It's it's costing the American population huge amounts, billions of dollars, and it's a huge crisis. You know what's going on. And they came out with recommendations, and the recommendations was, we need to switch from uh, disease care to structure function. Mm -hmm. We need to include chiropractic as as a pain, acupuncture, uh, body work, uh, exercise. You know, these types of things are really should be the first line of pain. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And then opiates are only good for really two weeks, because once you have chronic pain, when pain is long lasting, opiates actually make the pain worse Mm -hmm. and are extremely addictive. They wrote it all out. We need to go structure function care. When they got it to the people who actually make the decision and the pharmaceutical companies got a hold of it, they eliminated all that. Mm -hmm. They sit there and said, no, what we need to do is treat the drug problem with more drugs (laughs) so that we can sell more drugs. (laughs) <laughs> so uh, they basically whitewashed the entire scientific research and then the politicians and the people who are paying for things wiped all the recommendations out and said no we need to switch it over to this type of a ph- disease care model mm-hmm. let's not worry about the structure function it, we need to keep on concentrating on disease care mm-hmm so it was it was a huge frustration the uh surgeon general at the time under obama was like what the heck Mm -hmm. you know this is crazy this is not this is not the recommendation that we had come up with i remember when you read that you were excited you know oh yeah they're saying chiropractic acupuncture exercise the things that structure function medicine it uh-huh. is is really based on right and they eliminated all that mm-hmm. on the final report yeah because it hasn't changed it hasn't oh it's gotten yeah they're, yeah. they're not they're not addressing it and uh, unfortunately there is such a financial commitment on disease care and disease care only here in the United States that uh, the the voice of reason and logic and science mm-hmm. science mm-hmm is being drowned out mm-hmm. and pseudoscience is actually ruling how our health care should be run and uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm getting upset just talking about it yeah I mean and you're putting it a nice way it's it's greed it's criminal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's absolutely uh, a criminal it's just like when the whole opiate crisis started you know when they uh, they came out and they said that uh, opiates would be the first line and that they're not addictive I said I won't say what I said, because <laughs> I knew that was going to be a problem, and we even had radio programs on that, that yeah. this is going to be an issue, because it's not true, it's not based on science. And and quite frankly, 95% of the scientists were coming out, oh, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. You know, this isn't going to work. 5% uh, were saying, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, 5%. Which, yeah. Y- yeah. And so, who got all the grants, all the money? Uh, to go out there and speak, uh, it was those 5%. Mm. And that's who they published all the the research on. It was like, hey, yeah, we're going to make a whole lot of money, billions of -hmm. dollars Mm -hmm. uh, off of this. And those were the people who were promoted. So again, pseudoscience, because they had some really stupid studies that weren't accurate, which have been admitted were stupid studies. (laughs) 
That's your ter- third time using this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't You're emphasize how dumb those studies uh-huh. were. I read them. I'm like, what? Uh-huh. These are, have no scientific basis. They, you know, th- this is very poor research. And, are you but, talking about... For that opiates would be the first the line of defense. For the treatments, yes. Yeah. This is not real. I mean, there are there are a, about a thousand studies against one. Mm-hmm. But oh well. Yeah. Money talks. Well, when we come back, let's talk more on how to live longer. And also in our last segment, we're going to give an update on the coronavirus and influenza and where we're at right now. Good. Listen to the Voice of Health Radio on your smartphone or tablet on all of the top radio apps available. Tune in Radio, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. You can find these apps and more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is the Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. Laughter is the best medicine. I think I'm lactose intolerant, though, because last night I had four milkshakes and I felt like crap. I think it's the lactose. If you are lactose intolerant, don't be ashamed just because your tummy can't handle that spicy milk. <laughs> uh, do you have anything milder than milk? Uh, but not water, that gives me gas. <laughs> yeah. Trying to lay off dairy. I uh, bought some of that country crock margarine. Didn't stick in the fridge right away, it turned into gasoline. <laughs> That's got to be a tough product to market, because not only is it a bucket of whipped grease, someone had the audacity to call it crock. You think this is butter? It's crock. The Voice of Health Minute with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. What different forms of weight loss programs do we offer at the Prather Practice? One of the things that has been really successful that we're very excited about that should be a part of everybody's health plan is food allergies. You know, what are the best foods for you? We have a new genetic test that can be done by analyzing hair that will show up what is your best diet. And people who follow it really, really lose weight quite effectively. And also their health gets much better. Even people who don't have weight loss issues, but have different types of health issues, if they follow that, then they will see a very vast improvement in their health and well-being. We've had some people lose 35, 40 pounds without cutting down on how much they eat, but just following what foods to eat is one of the biggest things that has really made a big difference. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. Are you frustrated by not getting to the root cause of your health issue? Are you tired of not knowing why you're always fatigued? Are you wanting to say no to toxic drugs? Have you lost hope? Are you just tired of being sick and tired? At the Prather Practice, we want you to know that we have the answers for you. We offer the alternative to the disease care model. We are the drug-free model to health and wellness. At the Prather Practice, we look for the underlying cause of your health problem and not just the symptomatology. Through thorough diagnostics, we find your individual health blueprint for your treatment. Where the disease care model is symptom-based, the structure function model we practice gets to the root of your health issue. The Prather Practice is the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. Our integrated practice offers you the most treatment options to restore your health and your hope. Learn more about the Prather Practice by calling 317-848-8048 or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where our mission is restoring hope to our patients. We're talking today about how to live longer. And Dr. Prather, we're talking about life expectancy uh, for the first time in four years is rising. Well, let's talk about what factors play into the poor health of Americans. Well, the big factors, of course, that we have going on is that we are really into drugs. Mm -hmm. And that's not just illicit drugs, but also pharmaceutical drugs. We are really into it. We consume, well, you you know, if you're talking about the opiates in the world, uh, we have 5% of the population and we consume 80% of all the opiates. Mm. 
Now, we don't have just an illicit drug problem. People sit there and say, we got a drug problem, and they think about you know, people selling stuff on the corner and that type yeah. of thing. But we also have a drug problem of pharmaceutical drugs. Mm -hmm. We consume, not only do we consume a tremendous amount of illicit drugs, but also the pharmaceutical drugs for the prescriptions in, in the world compared to Europeans. Well, it, in France, mm -hmm. when you get a prescription, 40% of all prescriptions that are written out are homeopathic. Mm. 40%. Mm -hmm. Are homeopathic. Uh, Germany, it's the same thing. Uh, England, I mean, they, they sit there and they try to find something first. And let's say that we're talking about someone who's in their 80s over in France. Uh, they, uh, uh, most of them aren't actually on a drug. Mm -hmm. The average American is on five to ten drugs. Wow. And so their take over in Europe where the life expectancy is rising, Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, and higher than us. They, they take uh, a fourth of the number of pharmaceutical drugs that we do. Mm hmm now, if the drugs are actually going to make us live longer, uh, shouldn't they be taking more? The higher that we, we go with the amount of drugs, uh, if you take uh, four or more drugs, it's called polypharmacy. That's actually a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So, and we write as a diagnosis when people are coming in polypharmacy quite often. Because what polypharmacy is, if you're taking four or more drugs, you have no idea what they're doing. That's mm -hmm. stupid mm -hmm. health care. Mm -hmm. That's idiotic health care. Because if you got, have three drugs, they're probably going to do what they're, what they're told to do. If you're taking six drugs, nobody knows what they're doing because they're all interacting. Yeah. It, it, so And you're saying the average 80-year-old or above is on five to ten medications. Drugs. Wow. It, it's, it's, in other words... Don't say stupid again. <laughs> okay, sorry. sorry. Idiotic. <laughs> so, yes, we, we smoke too much. Uh, we do too much alcohol in the United States. It's a big, very big problem. We also uh, do illicit drugs, and we also do a tremendous amount of prescribed drugs. And why do people people follow that? Because we're programmed, if you have a problem, you take a pill. Yeah. You take a drink. Uh, how do we solve our problems? You don't sit there and deal with your problems. You take something so that you mask your problems. Mm -hmm. You know, you need a little pickup. You smoke your cigarette and drink your coffee. Uh, you know, you want to relax at night. You take a drink or you take a pill. Uh, you, you know, we're, we're, we have a mindset in this country that is is promoted by Wall Street, uh, by the United States government, uh, to you've got a problem, you you take something. Mm -hmm. And if no you know, we sit there and we wonder why our kids uh, are addicted to stuff and why they start getting into things because that's the way that we've allowed it to go. Mm -hmm. So we have to change our social consciousness. We have to approach things from a, let's start with little steps instead of, oh, let's just get that done immediately. We are an instant gratification, instant problem solving type of society. We have to change our mindset in our society. The, no other country allows drug commercials because mm -hmm. that's idiotic. I won't say stupid. <laughs> because okay. people don't know what they need. They shouldn't be deciding, oh, I need Reflex, uh -huh. because it said so on, on TV. Uh -huh. You don't do that to and the I public. The public like is person. too stupid to make those decisions. I remember the erectile dysfunction one. He was some cowboy. <laughs> like, that guy doesn't look like he'd have <laughs> But you could look like him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about, um, you know, we talked about the smoking playing right. such an important role. You know, and as you were talking, I was thinking, well, then social media and how they're working on the, on the brainstem 
most primitive level. Oh yes. And how that immediate gratification too, and it's just right, the, it's just a downward cycle. So and we then, talked about the whole thing on the screen time, and again, yeah. it's the instant gratification. We've got an instant gratification society, and we've got to stop it because mm-hmm. it's not healthy. Well, I just think the importance too of the spiritual, because mm. I know for me, as I'm going through something painful, you know, it'd be easy um, to go f- to the wine bottle or, sure. you know, sure. um, but, you know, I I have a relationship with God that mm. that I can just open my hands, not hold on to those things, and just release it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to Him. Yes. And and the peace that comes from that. Well, one of the things that is very important is what they call, uh, there's something called blue zones. Mm -hmm. And blue zones are areas where people have uh, the highest uh, uh, longevity. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is uh, stress levels. You know, the, the stress level in America is extremely high, and we have a lot of expectations. And people, they, they find that when the stress level goes down, and that's, you know, there's quite a few different types of factors. You know, social, family, uh, getting together, uh, you know, uh, less stress, community, mm-hmm. support. You know that you're not out there all by yourself. And then spiritual. Mm-hmm. Spiritual always plays a very big role. Because we're trying to, we, uh, America, uh, we're a stressed out nation. You know, people are stressed. We, mm-hmm. we have uh, very high expectations. There's a lot of um, uh, disparity in income level, in economic opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of expectations on, on people. It's, it's a go, go, go life. And we need to uh, take a step back and say, you know, quality of life is a lot more important. Mm -hmm. And what is it that makes a quality of life? Uh, The relationships and family, the uh, family unit, the support that we have, the community, uh, the spiritual aspects of of our life. You know, do we feel that we're belonging to people? Mm -hmm. So really trying to develop that. And... Uh, there's a lot of things that really go into longevity. One of the things is having a lasting marriage, uh, being involved in a church, you know, mm-hmm. community, uh, spiritual community, uh, all those types of things. And that's one of the things that, you know, the uh, millennials uh, are saying, you know, I, I, but they don't know how to get them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. They're, they're sitting there saying, hey, they want it. this society is, 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 is broken. Yeah. You know how do we how do we fix it? But they don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. So studying that and getting that into uh, what are the things, what are the qualities that actually make life worthwhile mm-hmm. is one of the things we need to stop and think about. Yeah. So we talked about you know the factors that play into the poor health of Americans: smoking, diet. Um, what? What role does diet play and how can diet be improved? Well, you know, if you're talking about cancer, the number two killer. American Cancer Society says 65% of all cancer comes from our diet. Hmm. So, you know, very big type of thing. We know that stroke uh, and uh, heart attack uh, has a lot to do with diet and obesity. Uh, One of the things that people who live in high longevity type of things... Yeah, the blue zones you were talking about. Yeah, fiber. Fiber. High fiber. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're looking for one supplement, you know, hey, what's the magic supplement, doctor? Can I take one thing Mm -hmm. and uh, make my life, you know, my diet? I say fiber. Mm -hmm. You go like, what? You don't hear that. Mm -hmm. Fiber probably does the most for people than any other thing. I find that people's fiber, we're supposed to have a type of bacteria in our gut that's 50% digestion of fiber 50 percent for calories that's the best way and also it cuts down on the amount of calories we burn by 50 Mm percent so if you can increase your fiber into your diet and which is usually a plant-based type of thing it really makes a, a, a very very big difference in your health so fiber cuts down on obesity fiber cuts down on on almost every cancer cuts down on cardiovascular disease so if there's one thing that you could actually do is fiber. 
And I know we do the psyllium husk in our office to, to increase that because it is hard in our diet. Well, you know, when we have the American processed diet, mm-hmm. you know, and most of the world really doesn't, mm-hmm. uh, it, it, the main thing that they, they process out is the fiber. Well, let's get rid of it. And it's, uh, I had a nutritionist in college and he was, he sits there and he, he was raising pigs and pigs are one of the best ways to kind of do a, a study on that. And they said, we got all this fiber because it was a grain mill close by. Uh, can we feed it to your pigs and see, uh, you know, and mm-hmm. get rid of it that way? He says, well, I don't want you know, I want something nutritional. So he decided to try it on, on a quarter of his pigs, gave them the fiber. And they were, they, they put on weight, they were healthier, they didn't get as, as diseased as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, they reproduced. And he's like, whoa, nothing that I've done has worked as well as fiber. Same thing is f- true for us. Get the fiber into your diet, you'll lose weight, you won't get heart disease as much, and you won't get uh, cancer uh, mm-hmm. near as much. So fiber in the diet is one of the biggest things that makes a difference in nutrition. That's one of the things they brought out. Now, how about diabetes, you know, and that can that can be controlled we're talking about type 2 diabetes huge and how could be in reverse this is actually we can have a show on this but oh my gosh we Uh, need to go to segment four okay all right but uh, fiber i can't i can't emphasize that enough the answer is fiber fiber (laughs) all right when we come back we're going to give an update on the coronavirus and influenza where we're at with those be right back Never miss an episode of The Voice of Health so that you can stay informed and empowered about your health. Get a podcast of our show automatically delivered to you every week by signing up for our show on iTunes. You can find that link on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. And don't forget, thevoiceofhealthradio.com has complete archives of all of our past episodes with an audio library of information to help you add more life to your years and more years to your life. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. So what role does vitamin K play in pregnancy-related problems? Well, pregnancy, the big thing, of course, is uh, hemorrhaging. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about pregnant women, the majority of people don't have really, really strong deficiencies in vitamin K. But you start to get into functional levels and probably, I would say, 80% of all women are low on vitamin K. What percentage? 80%. 80%. Huh. And lactating women also, you mm-hmm. know, who are breastfeeding. Uh, because vitamin K, the, the baby just kind of absorbs it. And most babies are deficient in vitamin K. That's one of the things that they're checking on is the vitamin K levels because they don't have the source from their gut because it hasn't kicked in yet. So the only vitamin K that they're getting is from mom, and they need a lot of vitamin K, so they're pulling it, sucking it in. Mm -hmm. So mom's levels are real high. Just sucking it from mom. (laughs) And then you you have a birth process, which can cause bleeding, Mm -hmm. and you can see where that can be a real dangerous combination. Mm -hmm. So making sure that mom has adequate levels, proper levels of vitamin K, is one of the big things, especially to prevent hemorrhaging, which could can be life-threatening for the mom and for the baby. Mm-hmm. So almost all babies are low vitamin K. Almost all pregnant moms are low on vitamin K. Mm-hmm. So very important type of an aspect. Really could make a big difference if we follow those levels. Also, it's very important for nausea and vomiting. Vitamin K solves nausea and vomiting, one That's of the major news. types of things, yeah. Mm-hmm. Along with B6, ginger, some of the other things. Excellent, excellent type of an aspect. Also, if you're low on vitamin K, remember I talked about the mitochondria? Mm-hmm. Well, if you're low on mitochondria and your body kind of stretches out, you get something called stretch marks, which is a sign of vitamin K and zinc deficiency. Also some vitamin C, but vitamin K plays a very big role along those lines. Mm-hmm. And so... Women who go, oh, I don't want the stretch marks, you know, they almost don't worry about other things. (laughs) But uh, I say vitamin K, and you can take it internally, and then you can actually rub vitamin K if you can get it earlier on the stretch marks, Uh and they will go away. So there's a cream that you can use on that. And spider veins, which is a big thing that women get when they're pregnant, too. 
and you take it and then also rub the vitamin K on there and spider veins can disappear. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. Have you ever been curious about how acupuncture can benefit your health? The Prather Practice has received the NDA List Award for Best in Acupuncture for two years in a row. And we've been rated the top acupuncture provider by Google+. Dr. Robert Prather is a board-certified licensed acupuncturist. He's earned a reputation for combining effective acupuncture-based techniques with cutting-edge technology to help patients with many conditions. Acupuncture is documented and proven to help with many health issues, including pain, allergies, addiction control, anxiety, fatigue, vision problems, infertility, and so much more. We even have needle-free options for those who are a bit squeamish around needles. Call the Prather Practice to schedule your appointment and experience the benefits of acupuncture for yourself. 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where our mission is restoring hope to our patients. Okay, so let's talk about where we're at with the novel coronavirus, novel meaning new. Give us an update right now, Dr. Prather, of where we're at. Sure. And there's a lot of rumors going around with the coronavirus, a lot of panic. Yeah. Uh, Again, it's, it's basically contained in China. Mm -hmm. Uh, though it's a very difficult there's about a thousand cases outside of China that have shown up most of them in uh, Japan Hong Kong countries along those lines Uh, the ones here in the United States are pretty are you know is is under control but there's still quite a bit about this virus that we really don't know Mm -hmm. and anytime that you're talking about a new virus that has been introduced into the human population it's a concern because it it, it, people don't have the immunity to it we haven't built it up now there are uh, quite a few different types of coronavirus that have been common in in human population but this is one that has now transferred and is being uh, being spread from human to human contact Uh, They don't know how contagious this disease is yet. The number one contagious disease out there is measles. You can catch measles uh, easier uh, than any other infection out there. Uh, Influenza is uh, down the line a little bit, but they do think that the coronavirus is actually more easily transmitted than influenza is. Okay. Is, what is that the where the early panic studies. comes from? Or? That's kind of what the panic is. Uh, and again, they don't know. Uh, this could actually turn into a very mild type of thing because some people get it mm-hmm. and hardly have any symptoms. Uh, some people get it and uh, will die very quickly. Mm-hmm. We don't know why. So anything that isn't that well known and understood creates concern. Mm-hmm. And the World Health Organization Center of Disease Control is really working overtime and doing a really good job at uh, getting the information, trying to get this concept of what's going on uh, under control, but they still don't know that much about it. So are we at risk here in the United States? Very good question. We actually don't know yet. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're talking about something that's easily transmitted, could it spread to the United States? Absolutely. Uh, could it not? Absolutely. Uh, it just depends on how well it's, it's uh, dealt with, uh, watched. Um, and at this point, uh, the Center of Disease Control is doing very well. Over in China, their first response was pretty poor. What uh, do you mean by that? Well, uh, basically, they had physicians who sit there and said, Hey, we've got something new here. This is a real problem. We need to deal with it. And they went to the government, and the government said, shut up, there, is no, there isn't a problem. 
And so they actually went to social media to start to get out there and get the word out to doctors to make them aware so that they know what that this is a new problem, that they need to be cautious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they were actually uh, uh, arrested for that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, they were, they were really suppressed and, and told, you know, don't say this. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, they were very brave and kept on, you know, speaking up about it. And matter of fact, uh, quite a few of them actually uh, uh, caught it and died mm-hmm. because of uh, the exposure. But uh, mm-hmm. very brave, very big heroes there. Uh, the Chinese government uh, uh, did a very, very poor job at the initial portion of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they seem to have uh, stepped up and trying to uh, control it at this point. They're realizing it's affecting their economy. Yeah, it, it's actually a, a big deal. Yeah. And it, it has shown up uh, quite a few of the weaknesses. But, you know, when you're talking about, uh, they always say uh, the new diseases uh, pandemic that kind of hits the world. Uh, would probably start in uh, China or Southeast Asia mm-hmm. because of the uh, poor controls, uh, the overuse of antibiotics, uh, the close contact between humans and animals mm-hmm. that is there, and uh, the poor conditions that uh, a lot of the animals are in. So it, it's, it's uh, not a surprise that that actually started in China. So how deadly is the virus? Well, the virus, uh, when you're talking about influenza, it's about uh, 0.1% of the people die from influenza. Mm-hmm. It's, of course, a big killer here in the United States. Uh, for the, this novel coronavirus, they're estimating that it has about a 2.3% uh, death rate that's associated with it, okay. which is about 20 times higher than influenza. So if it did spread and spread like the influenza, uh, we would have about uh, uh, 20 times the number of deaths that's involved with that. And you're talking about influenza as the number eight killer, you know, here mm-hmm. in the United States. So it would probably move it into the number one killer. Mm-hmm. So it, it, could it be a big deal? Yes. Now, SARS, uh, which was a coronavirus that hit before, and MERS were two coronaviruses. The SARS uh, was a 9.6% death rate, whereas the MERS was a 35% death rate. Oh, so that's higher. Yeah, yeah, like the MERS was very, very scary when that hit. I was watching it very closely, which was uh, in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Uh, They responded very quickly, got it quarantined, and it didn't spread. Uh, I can't imagine what would have happened if that had spread like uh, like the novel coronavirus. Mm-hmm. It would have been very devastating. Mm-hmm. So watching these types of things, it, it, it's a really big deal. Uh, the ca- number of cases is about 76,000. The deaths are about uh, 2,100. There's about 1,000 people who have uh, the novel virus that have been confirmed outside of China. Outside of China. Okay. Right. Um, well, is any update real quick here on the flu? Yes. Uh, for this year, it's about average uh, it's it's you know one that's been going uh, no difference than usually the country the the years before about 26 million flu illnesses about 250 thousand hospitalizations about 14 thousand deaths at this point now one of the things that has kept it from becoming a problem is the h3n2 which is actually a lot more of a of an issue it's only been about two uh, percent of all the infections right now most of it was um, most of it was actually influenza B, which isn't as as bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the people who have caught the influenza B have been uh, children. Uh, influenza A, which is H one N one, we actually do pretty well. Is uh, about was about forty three percent, and so uh, it hasn't been too bad, but definitely uh, uh, something that we're keeping an eye on. If the H three N two kind of kicks up at the end of the season, then we would have some problems. But right now we're doing okay. And the end of the season could be? All the way to March. To March. Okay. Yep. Through March? Yep. Okay. Well, it's important to keep your immune system up. That's right. Right now, it's hard the lack of sunshine. But um, if your immune system's compromised, important to get the blood work. Um, yeah. Take care of yourself. You know, mm-hmm. really start looking at structure function care instead of waiting until you have uh, get into disease care. All right. Well, That's thank you, Dr. Prather. Thank you, Lisa. 
The Prather Practice is located at 8902 North Meridian Street on the north side of Indianapolis, just south of the I-465 loop. If we can help you to achieve better health, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with our office at 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Join us again here next week or anytime on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com for The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather.